In this jam-packed video, I'm going to show you how to bring your photographs to life with this, the Canon Image Prograph Pro 300 printer. I'll show you how you can create stunning looking prints like this just a few minutes after unboxing your printer. I'm going to tell you about all the great reasons you should be printing your own photographs, how you can bring your photography to life and do something amazing with it. I've also got a stack of photo speed papers over there, which I'm going to use to create my own home gallery. I also talk a little bit about monitor calibration and printer profiling. And then finally, I'm going to take a very special photograph. I'm going to print it and print it big, put it in a frame and stick it on my wall. Okay, before we get into the business of actually printing some images, I just want to talk about a couple of the links that are in the video description below. So first of all, I got this printer from Photospeed. So if you want to go over to their website and pick up one of these Pro 300 printers, there's a link for that in the video description below. I've been a customer of Photospeed for many years, so it was really good to get a printer from them. Also, they have a very active uh, Facebook group all about printing tips and tricks. So if you've got a question about the printer or any of the papers that I even might show you in this video, head on over there. I've got a really active, very supportive Facebook group. And later on in this video, I'm going to be using lots of different types of photo speed papers as well. I'll list all of them in the video description below and there'll be links there that you can click and check out those papers as well. But we've got an awful lot to cover in this video. So let's make a start. Printing doesn't have to be difficult. And in this part of the video, I wanna show you how easy it is to get good prints from your Pro 300 straight out of the box. So for the first bit, we're gonna take the printer out of the box. I'm gonna quickly run you through the kind of hardware setup. Now, I've already done it, so I'll talk you through the key steps so you've got an idea of what's involved. So obviously you need to get the printer out of the box. That's quite easily done. And then you need to remove all the plastic and the, the tape that keeps it all secure. Once you get everything out of the box, you'll find the 10 inks, the print head, the power cable, some sample Canon paper, a CD tray if you want to print CDs, uh, a manual and a CD. Now, I always download the latest drivers from the Canon website, so I probably won't use that. I then switch the printer on, set the date and time using the LCD screen and the keypad. I then go ahead and install the print head. The LCD screen comes in quite useful here because it gives you a graphical representation of the step that you're performing just in case you don't know what to do. The next step is to install the 10 ink tanks. That's quite easily done. Just follow again the instructions on the LCD screen. If you want some additional help on each step on the manual, there's actually a QR code. So if you get your phone out and you scan that QR code, it takes you to Canon's website where there's a video and it will run you through that particular step. So if you're a bit unsure about installing the print head or how to install the ink cartridges, there's a nice video there to really help you along. So once the ink tanks are installed, the printer does its initial adjustments. That takes about seven minutes or so. Then you put some plain A4 paper in and it does a print alignment. This takes about three minutes. And the final step is about configuring the printer so you can access it. Now I'm connecting this printer to Wi-Fi and then I go to the Canon app, which I've already got installed on my mobile phone. I connect to the printer. I specify all my Wi-Fi details and that passes that onto the printer and that's that connected to the network. And that's basically the hardware setup done. That probably takes about 20 to 30 minutes. Now that we've got the hardware all configured and set up, it's time to install the software onto my computer. Now there's two bits of software that I'm going to install. There's a print driver and there's Canon's professional print layout software. Now I've downloaded both of these from the internet already, so I've got the latest versions. So let's start with the print driver first. So I'm just going to double click that. We'll click on Start Setup. So we'll select Wi-Fi connection. Okay, there it's found my Pro 300 printer. That's excellent. Click on Next. And it's installed on the driver. Okay, that's it all set up. Click on Next. I don't want to continue online. I don't need to download any software because I've got it already. So I'm going to install the professional print layout software next. Let's click on Next. So hopefully this software will allow me to print directly from either Photoshop or Lightroom using Canon's own software rather than the dialog boxes you get within those applications. Now, whichever one you choose to use, it's kind of up to yourself. I'm used to using Canon's software, so that's what I'll show in this video. 
we'll click on complete. And that's the software installation complete. We'll just have a quick look in my uh, control panel and just check we can see the printer installed. And if I look here, I can see that the printer has been configured in Windows. Okay, that's all the software installed. I'm now actually at last ready to make a print and I'm quite excited. So I'm going to open up Lightroom and find an image to print. Right, we've got our printer hardware set up. We've got the software installed. And now for the most exciting bit, which is making a print. It's the single best thing you can do with your photograph is to make a print. Now for this part of the video, we're going to try and make things as easy as possible. So therefore, I'm going to print using this Canon's Pro Platinum glossy paper. This is a sample that came with the printer. Now, the reason I'm picking this paper is that all the paper profiles are already loaded into the printer driver. So I don't need to worry about any of that kind of technicality. So all I have to do is go into the software, select that particular paper type and hit print and the resulting image should be bang on the money. So what I need to do is I need to pick an image. So I'm going to have a look at my Lightroom catalog and see which one I'm going to print. So I've got a list of all my images here. I've got them all cataloged already. So if you actually want to know how I catalog my images, I'll include a link uh, for the video in the description below. Actually, I think this one here that I took of Bellstone Common um, just, just at the end of the year, actually, I haven't printed this one yet. So I think I'll print this one. So I'm going to go File, Plugin Extras, Canon Professional Print and Layout. That was a bit of software that I installed. Right, so we've got my image loaded up here. I'm just going to rotate it so I can see it properly. There we go. I've got my correct printer. Now, there are lots of different options here. You don't need to get particularly worried about too many of them when you just print it off a, a simple image on the Canon photo paper, but I'll just go through the ones that I, I think that I need to set. So the media type. So we want to go into photo papers, and this is Pro Platinum, so that's listed there already. Uh, it's going to come from the top feed. We'll do the highest quality. Everything else I don't necessarily need to worry about. I can set borders and stuff if I want to, but I'm just happy with the, the defaults there. Um, and I'm just going to leave it on the auto profile. Again, because this is a Canon's own software using their own paper on their own printer, I can pretty well leave that automatic. All I need to do now is just to load the paper and hit print. Right, here we have the final image and it looks absolutely fantastic. Your photographs really come to life when you print them out. It looks absolutely brilliant. You cannot beat printing your own photographs. And hopefully in this part of the video, I've shown how easy it is just to get a printer like the Pro 300 out of the box and printing amazing images. But we've got a lot more to cover, so we better get moving. Well, I'm glad to have made my first print, something quite exciting about selecting an image and what should be printed on your brand new printer. But what are the specifications of this Pro 300 printer? Well, that's what we're gonna look at next. Now, of course, you can go to Canon's website and you can look at the full specifications. So, but here I wanna just talk about some of the key specifications and features of this printer to give you an idea of what it is capable of. So the first thing we wanna talk about is the ink system. Now this printer uses Canon's Lucia Pro ink. There's 10 inks altogether. Now this includes a matte black ink, which is a special ink designed to work on matte paper to give you better black graduation. And there's also Canon's color optimizer. Now this helps enhance prints on glossy surfaces. Canon say that your print should last up to 200 years and even 60 years in exposed light. The printer also has an LCD display in the front. Now, you would have seen this when I was setting up the hardware a bit earlier on in this video. This is quite a useful feature and it allows you to do a number of things. You can look at things like your ink levels, your configuration, networking. You can even perform various maintenance tasks using this panel as well. You can set things like the paper configuration. It's even got a thing called templates where you can go off and you can print off things like graph paper if you wanted to. It's a three inch color display but unfortunately it's not touched. You've got to use the little uh, dials to the right hand side. Okay, let's look at the paper trays next. 
The main one is the output tray, so this just folds out from the front of the printer. And then when you fold that out, you also find a location where if you wanted to do any CD printing, you load the special CD feeder in this little flap, you fold down, you put your CD on the tray, and you just slide that in, it prints it, and slides it back out. You then got the two input trays at the back. The first one is the top slot, and this is your multi-sheet feeder, this is where you can load in multiple sheets of paper. And then you've got the rear tray, but this is designed specifically for heavy papers. Though I have tested uh, the top slot using papers up to 325 GSM, but I only use that single sheet at a time. The printer will, of course, accept all different types of paper, so it will go up to a maximum size of A3+. It will also take panoramic paper as well, so if you've got some of PhotoSpeed's panoramic paper, which I think measures 210 millimeters by 594 millimeters, that paper size is already defined in the printer but you can also print up to lengths of 960 millimeters. And if you like to print on fine art paper, gone is the restrictions where you have to have that mandatory border. You can now do borderless printing on all paper types, including glossy, semi-gloss, matte, and fine art papers as well. And it will take papers up to 380 GSM. So how long does it take to print? images across all these different media sizes. Well, I've done a few tests myself. So for an A4 print, and this is a highest quality, borderless, it took four minutes, 15 seconds. For an A3 print, it took eight minutes, 13 seconds. And for an A3 plus print, it took eight minutes, 25. I also did a panorama print on Photospeed's panoramic paper, and that took seven minutes, 45. There are also lots of different ways you can connect to this printer. As you saw when I did the hardware setup, there is of course a wireless setting, but you can also connect to it via ethernet or USB. I could of course spend a lot of time telling you all about the specifications and features of this printer. I'll include a few of the highlights there on the side of the screen, but obviously if you wanna check out the full specification, head on over to Canon's website and you can see all the features and specifications there. But hopefully that's given you an idea of what the printer's capable of. Very shortly, we're gonna print off a whole stack of images for my home gallery. I can't wait to really start putting this Pro 300 through its paces. But there's always a couple of things I like to do first. And one of those is monitor calibration. This will make sure that what colors my monitor are capable of displaying are displayed as accurately as possible. Now, if you wanna know more about monitor calibration, I know of a couple of excellent resources. First of all is the Photospeed blog. It's got a whole article on monitor calibration, I'll include a link for that in the video description below. And if you wanna see some video content, I've already done a video on monitor calibration, how and how you can go about it using uh, something like this. this, is my Data Color Spider X monitor calibrator. So there's about a five minute video, that tells you how to use that device so you can calibrate any monitor or even a laptop screen. Now I'm lucky enough, I've got a ISO monitor here, pretty accurate out of the box. But even still, I like to use a calibrator to make sure that I'm getting the best I possibly can before I start printing my images. I showed you early on in this video how easy it was to get fantastic prints straight out of the box from the Canon Pro 300. But there will come a point where you'll want to branch out and move away from Canon's paper and perhaps try a paper from a different manufacturer like Photospeed. Now, you could just buy that paper, stick it in your printer and hit print, and you know what? You might get some good results. But what you really want to do is use a ICC profile for that particular type of paper. This helps the printer translate and reproduce the colors that you see on your calibrated monitor accurately on that particular paper type. Therefore, you do actually need an ICC profile for every combination of printer, ink, and paper that you have. Now, if you want to know more information about profiling, there is, of course, an excellent blog post on Photospeed's website. I'll include a link for that in the video description below. There are two types of profile. There's generic profiles and custom profiles. I'll talk about custom profiles in just a minute. Generic profiles are the ones provided by the paper manufacturers to work with the, normally their most popular papers on a specific printer. So for example, I downloaded from Photospeed's website this Legacy Goss generic profile for the Pro 300 and the results are absolutely fantastic. If you wanna see all the generic profiles that Photospeed offer for the Pro 300, there's a big list of them on their website. They're a really good way of getting started with these different paper types. If you want to get the absolute most out of your Pro 300, you really want to be using custom ICC profiles. Now you make those by printing off test charts like this onto each different paper type you have from the printer that you want profiled. Now, 
you scan those in and you get a bit of software and it creates that custom ICC profile for you. Now that sounds a little bit complicated. Well, it doesn't actually have to be. I've never actually done it myself. This is because I use PhotoSpeed's paper. I've been using them for years now and they offer for any paper that you purchase a free ICC profile in the service. So for all the papers that I'm gonna use in this video with that Pro 300, I've printed off these test charts, I've grouped them all together, popped them in an envelope, and then actually just a day or two later, I've got all my custom ICC profiles back. I've installed them real easy, and now I can make the most out of that printer. Now, if you want to know more about that profile and service and exactly how it works, I, of course, have done a video on that, so you'll find that in the video description below. But now that I've got my monitor calibrated, I've got my custom ICC profiles in, I'm ready to really put this Pro 300 to work. In this part of the video, I'm gonna use the Pro 300 to print off some of my favorite images to create a home gallery. I'm gonna tell you about the papers I've used, how I'm gonna mount them, and how I'm gonna display them. But Julian, what is the point in doing all this printing? It's a question you may be asking. Well, for me, printing is the single best thing you can do with your photographs. But you may be thinking to yourself, well, I don't sell my prints commercially, or my photography is not good enough. So I've got five images to print on five different photo speed papers. Therefore, I'm gonna give you five great reasons why you should be printing your photographs. Right, I've got the Pro 300 all powered on. I've got my papers ready to go. Let's print that first image. So here we have the first image of Dawlish Warren printed on this beautiful cotton etching 305 paper and it looks absolutely fantastic. Printing your work brings that photograph to life. You can have a really nice monitor like me, like an ISO one and it produces all the colours and the images look great, but it's not until you print it out and you see your photograph feed out and then you pick it up that it really comes to life. You can really appreciate your photographs in a whole different way and you can hold them in your hands and look at them like this. For my next image, I've got this beautiful photograph of Talisker Bay on the Isle of Skye, and it's printed on one of my new favorite papers, NST Bright White. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. I don't do a lot of black and white photography, but again, when you print something off like this, you can really step back and appreciate it. And I think this is one of the important things about printing your work, is that you actually spend more time looking at it, and as a result, your photography will improve. How often do we create a photograph and get all excited and share it out in social media and then we forget about it. It kind of wanders off into a digital archive somewhere. But by printing out your work, whether you pin it up on a wall, mount it in a frame, or just leave it lying about your desk, you'll spend more time looking at your photographs. And the more time you spend looking at your photographs, the better your photography will improve. You'll start spotting things about how you might change exposure or composition, or when you print, big images like this, you might start spotting stuff on the ground or in the sky that you hadn't seen before. You start seeing the, the real uh, minute details. So by printing off your work, you spend much more time looking at it and your photography will improve as a result. Next up, we have this picture of Luskentire Beach printed on Legacy Gloss 325 paper and the Canon Pro 300 has done a wonderful job of rendering those colors. There's some really lovely detail there in the shadows and those soft pastel colors there in the sky. It looks absolutely fantastic. I mean, who wouldn't want to hang that on their wall? And that leads me on to my next point, my next good reason for printing your work is that you can give the gift of photography. There's nothing much more satisfying than knowing that you planned the trip, you went there, you captured a photograph, you processed it, and you crafted a print, and then you gave it to someone and they've got it hanging on your wall. What's more satisfying thing to do with your photography than that? Next up, we have this image of Dartmoor printed on cotton etching 285. Now you may be thinking, well, I don't print that often, or I don't think I'll have a need to print that often. I'll just send it off to a lab if I need to get a print. But trust me, there's always a reason not to send it off to a lab. And if you don't have a printer, you know, you might not think about printing your images, but trust me, Get a printer, something like the Pro 300, and you'll be printing all the time. You'll be going out in the morning, taking your photographs, coming back, processing them, and making instantaneous prints. There's something really exciting about doing all that activity in the morning. Once you get a printer, you won't be able to stop. And for my final image, I've got this snowy bellstone common here on Dartmoor, and this is printed 
on platinum gloss art fiber 300. And for that final reason, I think you should all be printing your own work. And that's because photographs just look better in print. I mean, I love this photograph. It looks absolutely fantastic when I look at it on my monitor. And even though I've got a good monitor, like an ISO, the print just looks better. The photograph just looks better. Everything about the viewing experience of your photography is better when you make a print. For me, the photographic process isn't complete until I've made a print. And hopefully some of those things that I've mentioned earlier will encourage you to do some more printing. But I have been really impressed with the prints that have been coming out of this Pro 300. I mean, I've also printed this image here of Dartmoor. I printed this in both gloss and matte formats. And um, people actually often ask me which paper is best for which types of images. Well, I don't think there's a right or wrong answer really. And if you want to find out more, just buy something like a photo speed test pack of papers and just print off your images and see which ones you like best. For me, this image looked equally good in both glossy and matte format. I think the Pro 300, again, has done a fantastic job rendering these colors. And equally, as colors, it's also great at doing the black and whites. I think this image looks really good here. There's plenty of detail there in the shadow areas. I think it looks fantastic. And of course, my dog looks good in print. Now that I've got my photographs printed off, I need somewhere to display them. And I'm going to do this in my home gallery here. Now, it's a fairly simple setup, but it's a very effective, very flexible setup. Let me talk you through it. So the first thing I've got is I've got my picture mounts. Now, these are custom made by a company called Picture Frames Express. I'll include links to that in the video description below. But I just go onto their website. They've got a little bit of designer software, and I can specify the exact dimensions of what I want my mount to look like, including the width of the border here, how big the opening is. So these are designed to fit my A3 prints that I made earlier. And then all I do is I put a little bit of tape down the middle, so this gives me the opening, and I put the printed image in, tape it on, close it off. Now, I won't close the bottom end, because what I can do later on is if I want to change that print, I just open it up, remove the print, put a new one in. So I just reuse these, it gives me a lot of flexibility. As I said, you can do them for any size you want, you just specify the parameters. So here's one I've done to fit Photospeed's panoramic paper. So I'll find a nice image to fill that one as well. And then the next bit of my setup is this thing here. It's called an Ikea picture ledge. I can stick a link in the video description below. These just screw onto the wall and they've got a little ledge that runs down the middle there. And that allows me to just to slot in these picture mounts in any combination or any format that I want. It gives me a lot of flexibility. I can put A3+, plus, I can put A4, A3, all sorts of mounts and I can move them all about. And I can even put just printed images. I don't have to mount them. I just, uh, they sit in that little ledge there. So that kind of setup gives me a lot of flexibility. I'm not drilling holes in the wall. I'm not doing anything on a permanent basis. So I can just chop and change the prints that I want in my own little home gallery. So that's that set up. It's looking a bit blank at the moment, I think you'll agree. So when I get those prints, put them into the mounts and get that home gallery done. So here we have it, my home gallery, and I hope you agree, it looks absolutely fantastic. And this is the reason why I have a printer like the Canon Pro 300, is so I can print off images like this and put them on display. No matter how good your monitor is, you cannot replicate this kind of viewing experience for your photographs on your monitor. You have to print them off. And it's just great, I can come into my room and I can pick up one of my photographs and I can really appreciate what it looks like. It's such a fantastic thing to do with your photographs. Now, while the photographs in these mounts will probably change over time as I go out, over the year and I take more photographs, I'll probably swap them out and this will be quite a, a fluid display. There is one more picture that I'm gonna print off in this video and it's gonna have a much more permanent fixture in this room. Welcome to the final part of this video where we're gonna put the Pro 300 to work by creating an A3 plus print of this image here. Now, you may be asking what's so special about this image? Well, for me, it's personal reasons. This particular image has won a commended award in last year's Scottish Landscape Photographer of the Year, something which I am immensely proud of. So for me, that picture deserves a permanent place on the wall there behind me. Now, to do that, I need a frame. And here we have a frame here that I've ordered from Picture Frames Express. It's the same company that did all those mounts that I showed you when I was doing the home gallery. Now this is custom designed to my needs. Now, if you want to know how I went about doing that, 
When I framed and printed this particular image, I did a video on it and I went through the entire process of going through Picture Frames Express designer software to create that custom frame. So if you want to check that out, the link's in the video description below. And it also shows you how I've uh, attached this frame to the wall as well. Got the frame, need a print, don't I? So I've printed off a couple of sample images here. So I've got this uh, gloss paper here and I've got a matte paper here. Now, color-wise, they're both pretty well exactly the same. So it's really down to personal choice for me. And I think in this instance, for me, it's gonna be the matte paper. So this is Platinum Cotton 305. So I'm gonna grab an A3 plus sheet of this, feed it into the printer, hit print, get that printed off, put into the frame and then put the frame on the wall and we'll see what the final result looks like. So there we have it, it's on the wall at last and I'm over the moon with the results. The combination of the Canon Pro 300 printer and Photospeed's Platinum Cotton 305 paper has helped me produce an amazing print, something I can be really happy with, something I can be proud enough to give it a permanent place on my wall. Now, every time I come into this room, I'm gonna see that print and I'm gonna be transported back to that morning in Luskentire Beach when I captured that image. For me, photography is all about experiences and there is really no better way to relive an experience than by looking at a print. Well, we certainly have covered a lot in this video, so thank you for sticking about. I've shown you how easy it is to get your printer unboxed and straight into making your first high quality print. We discussed some of the specifications of the Pro 300. I briefly talked about calibration and profiling. I've shown you how you can take your prints and create a home gallery. And of course we made this beautiful framed A3 plus print. I've had an absolute blast using this Pro 300. Combined with those photo speed papers, I've been able to produce some stunning prints, things that I can be really happy with. But more than that, what I want you to take away from this video is I want you to be inspired to print your work because printing your work is one of the best things you can do for your photography. Just before I go, just to remind you that there are time codes for all the different sections of this video, as you'll find those in the video description below, so you can jump about the video and go back and re-watch any of the sections as you want. I also mentioned a lot of other videos, blog articles, products, all that kind of stuff, lots of links. They're also in the video description below but I've also put a copy of them in the blog article that goes with this video. That's on my website. That's the address just down there. So please head over there and you can check them out there as well. But if you wanna watch out a couple of those videos that I mentioned straight away, I'm gonna put those up in the corner of the screen now. So that'll give you something to watch uh, straight away. But that's it for me. Thank you so much for sticking about to the end of this video. And until the next one, I'll see you then.